for me, political ecology, I'm an environmental scientist, and political ecology was a totally new way of looking and understanding environmental problems. I was trained to see environmental problems from their biophysical perspective, to understand how natural processes work and uh, create certain environmental changes. Political ecology brought to me an all uh, together a different way of uh, seeing the problems and understanding that in their essence, environmental problems are problems of distribution and problems of the exercise of political and economic power. There are always winners and losers in environmental change. And uh, the question is who has the power to benefit from environmental change and who has the power to externalize their costs of environmental change to others. I think um, what we do is basically addressing the uh, way society and the economy is relating to the environment. And uh, we also try to show that the increased metabolism of the economy, resource extraction and uh, also uh, waste disposal create conflicts, give rise to social and environmental conflicts. Conflicts uh, arise from the in a deep inequalities and very often violent processes by which um, environmental burdens are uh, imposed upon disenfranchised uh, human groups. What appear to be local conflicts over land, um, struggles over resources, over environmental health, those what look like localized struggles are in fact uh, embedded within institutions and frameworks that exist at multiple scales. So there's a whole set of connections that are important for a political ecology to sketch out. Political ecology has a particular way of looking at environmental so-called disasters uh, as unnatural disasters because they are socially produced uh, in most cases. Probably one of the main contributions of political ecology to the new thought about natural disasters is the application of these sciences to the earthquake and tsunami which have affected Chile uh, during February uh, 27, uh, 2010. No? Because uh, most of the explanation that we used to, to, to have are related with geophysical aspects, you know, the fault and the tectonics which is uh, active in this part of the Pacific. But again, the problem is not necessarily only related with the natural factors. During this, this, uh, this big disaster, we had many, many people killed because the homes were not prepared, the cities were not very well located. It is it, not a, a warning system which was, which was able to, to advert the population about the occurrence of big tsunami. No? So there are many such a responsibility, political responsibility, which should be understood, to be analyzed. The question of commons comes up quite a bit in work on natural resource extraction, oil, gas and mining. And the issue there is many of these extractive projects are in parts of the world where there are existing land users, um, people who have been using the land for generations in, in many cases, and who have developed customary forms of property. The water is commons, and the sea is commons for fishermen. And commons means that there are rules on how to take care of the commons. There are rules how many sheep or how many cows have you can you put in a communal forest or how you can how much fish you can take and the other people are watching you or in fact there are customary rules on how to use the commons so what you get in these extractive frontiers is an overlaying on top of these customary land claims and um, forms of property that have evolved over time overlaying on that are these private property rights owned by mining companies for the purposes of extraction. And what that means in those communities is that extraction is often experienced by existing land users as a form of exclusion, actually as a process of dispossession. What I think we do need in political ecology approach to the commons is to introduce two elements social power within the local community and how this influences 
uh, conflicts around the commons and also influences maybe unsustainable ways of managing the commons. And outside the local community, how uh, the, the, commons, the um, commons management is related to broader political economy processes at a, a national and international um, scale. I think uh, the origins of political ecology uh, is an uh, activist movement because we had probably environmentalism of the poor much before political ecology. And when there is a conflict, we find the poor people and the indigenous people particularly, and women particularly, fighting for the environment because of livelihood needs. They need the environment and they use what we call valuation languages which are different from what the companies use of the government. The companies talk about money and say, we're going to get money, you, we can compensate you, perhaps we can give back some money to you. And these indigenous people, quite often they say, the land is sacred, or this mountain is sacred, or this river is sacred, or this tree is sacred, a single tree, and you cannot take it out because it's sacred, so you cannot buy sacredness with money but there is something that we call activist knowledge, which is the knowledge that the activists acquire. They know a lot after a while, because they are every day on the same issues. And, that, and I see this, that political, the networks of political ecology have to be in a way very much connected to these networks of activists. And this is why in Entitled we try to break uh, the standard lines of academics versus the rest, versus the public. And we are trying to work with civil society organizations and also with uh, engaged researchers who are involved uh, both as researchers but also as activists in social movements and bring together this uh, everyday lay political knowledge together with uh, academic uh, research knowledge that is produced by political ecology. With Entitle, I think what, what we're going to achieve is we're going to definitely uh, increase our scientific capacity as an organization to uh, participate in the development of science and this will also facilitate our task as a bridge organization between civil society and science but also with local administration for example to bring tools to these other sectors that might remain uh, separated from sciences so far. I think one of the things that unites people in the network is the sense that there are major, significant environmental issues that need to be addressed and that a lot of those, the ones that we're focused on in the network, are around questions of justice, questions of inequality, around the distribution of power and that knowledge production as critical social scientists our objective is to produce forms of knowledge that enable transformation, that enable change. What you can do in any specific uh, conflicting situation or situation of injustice is first of all to create the, si the science that demonstrates that this is a problem of injustice because in many cases problems are framed in very different ways. So the production of knowledge that challenges the dominant explanations of a particular situation is an important is an important uh, contribution that can change also political debates, social debates and lead to different outcomes. So I think this uh, political ecology is very closely related to the extension of democracy, to amplify the questions for debate in the public scene. Relating all these work is very important and I believe only if a large group of respected people um, working together, referring to each other, relating to each other um, can change um, real policy makings. This is like a kind of capacity building as well. I see it as a capacity building for people doing similar kind of work and uh, this is like a kind of academic bottom-up uh, movement. By bringing all these uh, different groups together that have common interests in the sense of studying uh, power relations over environmental change and conflict and social movements, but by bringing them together that they look these issues from different perspectives, we, we believe that we will create something more than the respective parts. And that's the idea of political ecology because it's a, 
interdisciplinary field. I would call it an inter-interdisciplinary field in the sense that it brings together people who are already interdisciplinary, but it brings them together with a bigger purpose and a bigger idea, which is to understand the political and the power dimension of environmental problems. And so at the, the Entitled Network, we don't offer solutions, especially we don't offer technical solutions to that problems. But we do have a message, and the message is that environmental issues are also political issues. So what we strive for is to understand how people can get involved in environmental solutions and, and how democracy can uh, allow people to get involved and have voice in those solutions. You cannot get out of politics. Politics is everywhere because it has to do with the distribution of power in society. And therefore, even if we don't want to, when we study the ecology of humans, we have to use different sciences, including political science and social sciences and economics and geology, chemistry, biology. So it's difficult to do. Everything is our field. But of course, one has to be modest and say, what I do is I become an ignorant in many fields and then I can ask other people so political ecology in that sense is very interesting stuff, it's new.